Just you clarity, you're getting it. The Dow is up 33, 15.7 is where we are. Back to the fireworks on Capitol Hill. ...attempt to upload information or change information on the website is prohibited. Uh, it really doesn't say anything about privacy, but you do have to accept that in order to go forward with the application. The next slide shows what's not public. This is in the source code. We tried to determine this morning if it was still in the source code, but it's been pointed out the website's down. This is much more, uh, uh, what I would say, uh, uh, frightening to me. It says you have no reasonable expectation of privacy regarding any communication or data transiting or stored on the information system. At any time and for any lawful government purpose, the government may monitor, intercept, search, and seize any communication or data transiting or stored on the information system. Any communication or data transiting or stored on this information system may be disclosed or used for any lawful government purpose. Uh, Cheryl Campbell of CGI Federal said she was aware of it, but said that it wasn't her responsibility to put that in the source code. Uh, were you aware of it, and was it your responsibility to put this in the source code? Mr. Barton, I did not put things in the source code. I can tell you it's my understanding that that is boilerplate language that should not have been in this particular contract because there are the highest security standards are in place and people have every right to expect privacy. All right. Now, the last time we could check, this was still there. You're given almost unlimited authority under the Affordable Care Act to, uh, to administer it. Will you commit to the committee and to the American people that one, you do want to protect their privacy, and two, you will take this out, fix it, make sure that it, it doesn't have um, bearing on people that try to apply through the website. Yes, sir, and I had those discussions with CGI, and it is underway. I do absolutely commit to protecting the privacy of the American public, and we have asked them to remove that statement. It is there in error. It needs to be taken down and we should be held accountable for protecting privacy. Yes, well, thank you, Madam Secretary. I, I sincerely appreciate that and I'm sure the American people do too. My last question, or it's really a comment, I've introduced H.R. 3348, which says let's make this system voluntary for the first year since we're having so many problems and let the American people decide. What that means is if people choose not to participate, they would not be charged the penalty for non-participation. Um, would you support such a uh, reasonable uh, approach to this while we work out the problems in the system? No, sir. Okay. Well, that's an honest answer. Gentleman's time has expired. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair, Secretary. Chair would recognize the gentleman from New Jersey, Mr. Palom. Privacy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Representative Joe Barton, he's Republican from Texas, he asked a direct question. Are That's you right. going to preserve my privacy? And, and she, she, said, she they were talking about financial privacy, but in the Federal Register of January 2013, this secretary has said, if you really want privacy, pay cash. Well, but she did say, yes, I commit to your privacy. That's right, but in and fact, there's talking nothing about, behind that. We're talking about the, financial sharing, privacy. the sharing of your family's, yours and your family's information with other government agents. Financial information. Okay, uh, I've Financial got to get back. Revenue. There's a, a political slam in progress right now. Go. This whole idea that's being brought up today that somehow, um, uh, you know, policies are being canceled and people don't have alternatives, it's just another red herring. Uh, you know, what I think my colleagues on the other side forget is that this is not socialized medicine. This is, in fact, private insurance in a competitive market. And if I'm an insurance company and all of a sudden everyone else is set, selling a better policy with better benefits at price, I can't continue to sell a lousy skeletal policy that doesn't provide benefits and costs more because I'll be out of the market. And so that's what's happening here. You know, insurance companies are canceling lousy policies with high prices because they can't compete. And that's what's going to happen when you have a private insurance market, which is what we have here. We don't have a government-controlled system. We have private markets. So I just wanted to make that point. But I have to drill down on what Mr. Uh, Barton said here. You know, before reform, the individual insurance market was dysfunctional. Premiums would shoot up if people got sick. Their coverage could be canceled if they had a pre-existing condition. And they did not have secure quality coverage. 
Now, I've heard my Republican colleagues say that patient health information will be at risk in this application pr process, and this is flat out false. In fact, the ACA makes a giant leap forward for protecting health information by taking it completely out of the insurance application process by banning discrimination based on pre existing conditions. Mr. Barton, again, is, you know, raising this red herring just like the cancellation of insurance by talking about privacy. But, Madam Secretary, prior to the ACA, when people applied for insurance coverage, did insurers make them provide a long, detailed, invasive medical history? But now, because the law bans discrimination based on pre-existing conditions, individuals will not have to provide this information in their applications. So regardless of this clause, Please comment on the privacy issue and why Liz, it's relevant. Liz, you've got to say something about this. Quickly, the IRS said 10 million people could see their policies canceled. I don't think that's a red herring to the people who are going to see their policies canceled. Again, pre uh, the Congressman Pallone hits it right out of the park. Clearly, he is in an alternative universe to the people who are now seeing their policies canceled that they wanted. He used the expression, lousy skeleton coverage, to describe current policies that people actually want and have chosen. That's right. them lousy skeleton coverage. This is the defensive lie that they've now created. The fact is, the American people are intelligent enough to choose between the plan they have now and what's being offered on the exchange. And you just heard Kathleen Sebelius say, we won't give them that choice. We're canceling these policies and we are compelling them to sign up for this insurance. One word no headline. Choice. Quickly, one word headline. Dismissive. Um, everybody, uh, we would like your stories, please. If your insurance has been cancelled, and that's what these people are talking about right now on Capitol Hill. If this applies to you, we'd like you to contact us. Get onto our Facebook page. Tell us your story. What's the deductible that you've been forced into? What's the plan that you've been forced to get rid of? And What's the plan that you're forced, at much greater cost, to take on? We want to hear from you. Back to the hearings. They would not get their health condition for a fixed tip written into the insurance plan. They will have a new day in a very competitive market. 25% of the insurers are brand new to the market, and they are offering competitive plans. Mr. Chairman, could I just ask that um, this Chair, document... Put it in the record. No, no. Put it in the record. Without objection. Thank you. Chair would recognize Mr. Hall. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Madam Secretary, I think uh, Congresswoman Blackburn asked you about the federal government, how much they'd spent today, and they're spending some money as we speak, aren't they? It's down right now, isn't it? Is that, are you had you projected ongoing problems? I'm sorry, sir. I'm having a hard time okay. hearing. What was the? She asked you how much it had spent today, and I'm asking you what you expect um, to pay. There to appears to be a, a somewhat temporary lull here while the Congressman uh, Ralph Hall, Republican Texas, uh, organizes his question and Ms. Sebelius actually hears it. Uh, in the meantime, what are the themes? that are emerging thus far. Yes, well, sir. the most important theme is that well, millions of people are being forced out of the plans yes. they were promised they could keep and being forced into a health exchange run by the government. Ms. Sebelius is defending that forced move to alternate coverage. Yes, She's defending with the paternalistic argument, which is government knows best. You didn't understand how lousy your plans were. You can't make your own decision. You must buy what we've chosen. Theme two, the, re the re insurance companies, Liz, they are the demons here. That came out very, very clearly from Representative John Dingell. Yes, White House Advisor Val Valerie Jarrett also tweeted that. It's basically it's the insurer stupid who are not offering the right plans as the, under the government mandate. Who created this mess of the rollout? Now, Ms. Sebelius has taken responsibility. She says, I am responsible, blame me. She would not allow another young lady, Ms. Uh, Ms. Schneider, I believe it was, would not allow her to be blamed in this case. The, was, the White House is lucky the, uh, the technology isn't working because it has deflected attention from the far more critical issue you the big lie you can keep your plan if you want it. Well, All the focus would have been on that illusion. had the website not malfunctioned. You know, Betsy, the word lie is a very strong word. It is word. a lie. It's clearly a lie. It was a lie 
Uh, the I first time the president said it, he has said it for three president years, president. but the law itself Sorry, proves, yes. Section 20, 1251, I, proves it's a lie. The fact that the unions are not having any of these problems because their grandfather clause didn't have all those weasel words and fine print. Okay, let, let me sum this up. The